In this episode of Mighty Car Mods, it is time to get the moon buggy working. Will it work at all? Is it blown? It's completely unknown. It's a journey that has never been journeyed before on this planet or any planet. So come with us on an intergalactic journey into outer engine sphere. Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods and it's a very exciting day because it is time to get this thing going. Now this is my new moon buggy which is based on a early 70s Volkswagen Super Bug Super Beetle but it's heavily modified as you can see to make it look like it's a lunar vehicle. Uh, the car was built uh, and built very well. Uh, mind you, like it's absolutely off its chops. Uh, it was built for an advertising campaign. I bought it because it was just sat in storage and then since then it's been sitting in my mum's garage for the last five years. It hasn't been touched, it hasn't been started, so I have no idea what state it's in. But as you can see, it's a very unique and strange car and something that I'm really excited to try and get going again. But when it comes to these kinds of engines, uh, I have little to no experience at all. Um, and as you may know, Marty's not uh, around for this one. He's working on his MR2, but luckily, I know somebody who knows all about these, so let's go get him. It may seem strange, but the key to unlocking the full potential of this moon buggy is hidden deep inside this guitar store. Hey, Andrew. Hey. How you doing, hey, brother? Yeah, good. Good to see you. Is that Isaac upstairs? He is, mate, but he's tied up. Is he? If I'm going to have any chance at all of beating Marty's MR2, then I need to speak to the young man at the end of this corridor. Yo! Oh, hey, hey dude, man. how you doing? How are you, mate? What are you doing? Oh, just working on this manually and it just needs a refret. It's just had a bit of a hard life, surprisingly. A refret? This is our mate Isaac, who works at the Guitar Factory. He's a guitar tech for the best musicians in the business, and he services all of Marty's and my guitars at our recording studio. But as well as being an absolute boss on the G-string, he also knows a thing or two about old Volkswagens. So I've decided to ask Ask him if he can help me with my old beetle while Marty is knee deep in Mr. Poo. All right, Isaac, feast your eyes on that. Jeez, man, that's not what I had in mind. Like, that's wild, <laughs> far out. It's crazy, isn't it? Oh, dude, it's so crazy. But look how intricate all the piping is, like and, and all the design of the cage. Like this has been sort of thought out in some weird, crazy dream. So everybody, <laughs> uh, this is Isaac. Uh, he's actually our guitar tech. As a lot of you know, Marty and I actually met uh, working at a recording studio and we did music for many years before we were doing Mighty Car Mods. Uh, and Isaac um, is the one that services and techs all of our guitars. That's right. Uh, but turns out he's also a bit of a Volkswagen freak <laughs> as well. <laughs> What's your history with these kinds of Cars. Oh, look, I just fell into them as a teenager, just didn't have much cash and my dad was super into Volkswagens and he could fix anything. I believe it's probably a 1975 Super Beetle. There's a okay. few things I just noticed then looking at it that it's not, it's not an early Beetle. This is a later variant of okay. that car. Um, yeah, and I had one like this with no roof, it was a chop top and it ran terribly and I was paying it off every week and didn't know how to fix it. And then from there, I just caught the bug. I okay. caught the bug. Oh no, you Racing the bug. them, building them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what man. are we looking at? Like, what is this? I don't this? know. Automatically, when I, the first like, thing is I noticed in the room is the bigger motor. That's not a standard Volkswagen engine. This is a modified um, engine. On How big is a standard Volkswagen engine? Well, for this model, it should be like a 1585cc, so a standard so 1600, 1.6 yeah, okay. litre. Yeah, and that made about 45 to 50 horsepower, depends on what country, emissions, standard, that sort of vibe. Yeah. Um, you know, this looks like it makes a bit more. Um, I don't want to make any assumptions till I've looked a bit closer, but okay. um, this is your typical modified air-cooled engine package put in the rest of this, which is wild. Like, I, I can't even describe this at the moment. Okay. So it's been sitting for five years, okay? Right, okay. Um, the fuel lines are all cracked. Yep. As you can see, like, they're actually just, like, they're, they're hard as old oh, nuts. Wow. Like, they're, they're, Jeez, okay. they're rooted. Yeah. Um, I don't know anything about carbies other okay. than when I've, like, rebuilt them for motorbikes and stuff. Oh, so great. I don't know if it's, yeah. like, similar, but I imagine that when they're sitting for yep. five years, they might be a bit gummy. Of course. If there's fuel in it or fuel yeah. going through it, that means that all of these lines are going to be full of old fuel. Weber carburetors, what these are, um, they're on sort of 
everything sort of sports car related that's sort of vintage, you know, inspired stuff, you know, Alfa Romeos, you know, Ferraris even, you know, Volkswagens. There's so many, so many vehicles out there that are still running with these carburetors. Okay. So the aftermarket is huge. So. Is that worth much? So I, I spent I bought I spent eight grand on the whole oh, thing. Oh right, okay, yeah. Look, to build a modified air cooled engine that's you know probably going to be we're probably talking double the horsepower of what it was intended to do. Um, it wouldn't be uncommon to spend somewhere around the ten thousand dollar mark at the moment, and that would really only net you around a hundred horsepower. Yeah. At the top end of that scale, you find that this platform, just looking at it, um, it could be up, upwards of one hundred and forty perhaps, but that's that's approaching that hundred kilowatt mark is sort of approaching the top end okay. of a naturally aspirated, street-going air-cooled. <laughs> One small step for... Volkswagen. So when you're working on a project like this, a car and an engine that hasn't run for so many years, really the goal today is to get clean petrol out of the tank, down, into the carbies, make a bang, get some spark, make sure there's compression and actually make it start. So what I did was ask Isaac what's some of the kind of common stuff that we might need, and a lot of this stuff had to come from America. So um, there are things just like fuel lines and things like that. And then of course the battery's probably dead, but luckily um, Sentry, yes. uh, who's a sponsor of our show, uh, have sent us a battery. These are made in Australia, so we're big supporters of them and um, that should give us the power we need to get it going. Shall we enter the wormhole? I'm stopping, I'm stop, I'll stop, I'm sorry. It's going to take an intergalactic effort to get this moon buggy running again after sitting for so long. But once we do get it going, as long as this is a properly worked engine, it'll most definitely chop Marty's MR2. Battery gone. Just looking at it, it's sort of like the more I'm looking at it, you can tell there's just so many hours of time, like the welds are really good. It's sort of things are in thought out, well thought out places. Yeah. I think, you know, it's interesting because in the Volkswagen world, you get the opposite extremes. You get the really backyard, rough, thrown together, zip tied, you know, not that that's a problem, but. Mighty car mods, basically. No, not really. <laughs> not really, but the, the, you sort of get the opposite the opposite extremes, and this is clearly built really well. I mean, that pedal box alone, I'm just looking at that cluster, would have been so expensive to buy. Yeah. These guys weren't mucking around. Our first job is to remove and then pull apart the carbies. Now, while I have little experience with these, Isaac actually builds and sets these up for people when they're racing their Volkswagens. So luckily, this is something that he is all over. Yeah, I love carburetors. Like, I've mucked around with heaps of EFI stuff too, but for me, like, this is as close as it gets to the old old school racing thing in me, the grassroots type yeah, vibe. Yeah. I love that they're, they're really intricate and they're detailed. And I do a lot of that stuff with guitar work too. For me, it's like, I love dealing with those small little things, pulling stuff apart and, you know, it just blowing it up on a bench and, and putting it all back together and getting it working better than it was. Yeah, awesome. Okay, let's pull these carbies apart. And to stay with the old school aesthetic, we're gonna limit our use of power tools and try and use spanners for everything we can. Good news people, we've got our first evidence that this engine may be a goer making bulk power because if we look down here, we can see that it's got ported heads. We've got more airflow through the engine, means this thing's probably gonna do something. That's good. Yes, that's excellent. <laughs> Uh, so next step now is um, rebuild some carbies. Yeah, that's it. Which I've never done this detailed. I've done a GN 250. <laughs> I've never done anything like this, but yeah, let's, Mate, be fine. let's get it done. There may be some younger viewers wondering what this old school device is. Well, for starters, a carburetor is not meant to have this much sand in it. A carby simply mixes air and fuel together, but once you start pulling one apart, it doesn't seem that simple at all. You can really dive down the wormhole of Venturi's, Bernoulli's principal butterfly valves and power valves, but all you really need to know is that the first carby was invented almost 200 years ago, and you can still find them now in lawnmowers and my Volkswagen. So we have liftoff of the auxiliary Venturi that's what it's called. See, all the old school people watching this are like, yeah, of course. All the young people are going, what? What? Where, where's the SR20? What? Where's the 1J? Where do I plug my laptop? But no, this here, look at that. Auxiliary boosters. It even looks like a spaceship. It's look like at it. Rocket. 
So cool. We're going to space, people. We've got some more evidence that indicates that this engine may be bigger than the 1.6 litre. Um, that is these little jets here which control the idle, uh, or control everything up to like 2,500 RPM, right? Those particular jets, These yes. are bigger uh, than what you would normally expect to see. So this here indicates that the engine is bigger as well because yes. it needs more fuel at that low end. So if we're lucky, it might be a 2 litre, 2.1 litre, 2.2 litre. We don't know yet, but it's looking like it's bigger than 1.6, which means bulk power incoming in our moon buggy, which is awesome. The demand on the float bowl is directly proportionate to the velocity through the throttle bodies. Um, so the Venturi dictates the fuel flow uh, and fuel requirements that the engine needs. Um, the jetting um, is just a metering device for that fuel going into the engine. Will it do a skid? So that's what five-year-old fuel looks like, people. Look at that, like cola, it's black, turning into varnish. Now we can pull the Venturis out, which should give us some more information about the engine size. Yep, so just pull the Venturis out, even just one. Man, mine are huge. What's, what have you got? This has a number written on there. It should say, does it say 36? Oh yeah, 36. 36. So this now 100% confirms that this is a large capacity engine. Excellent. So we're probably looking maybe 2.1, maybe 2.2 litre. So yes. we're, we're probably targeting that upper range of 140 horsepower, that 100 kilowatt type vibe. Okay, at the so, wheels? No. At the engine? Yeah, but there's not a great deal of loss through these sort of transmissions, so it's still a good amount of power for a light thing. Yes, that's right. It'll it's, do a skid. It's all about power to weight. It'll do a skid. It's all it has to do. <laughs> these are really big. <laughs> okay. Oh, I mean, it has to smoke an MR2. That's all it has to do. They're what, 220 horsepower, maybe 1200 kilos. This is what, 800 kilos? Oh, 140 less. I reckon, horsepower. I this is less. It's going to be a pretty good race, man. Yeah, like, awesome. Nah, bro, bro, bro. Yeah, use that one, I think. No, not together, bro. <laughs> Perfect, nailed it. We've almost reached the end of the black hole, which is the disassembly of these carbies, even though you probably can't get to the end of a black hole. But once they're disassembled, we're gonna give them a good clean in WD-40 brake and parts cleaner. While Isaac does what he does best and gets stuck into the carbies, I'm gonna replace the entire fuel system on the moon buggy. the stick vac which is a cordless vacuum usually it's got that when you're kind of doing your house or whatever but you can get a little bit of hose like that and gaffer tape it onto an end of a nozzle like that and that lets you get into all of those crazy hard to reach places to reuse the fuel filter that was already on the car but unsurprisingly like the rest of this vehicle it is full of sand with the fuel filter now thoroughly cleaned i can put it back on the car along with the new fuel regulator a fuel pump and now i can get going on replacing all of the old hoses If you want to give your car a touch of Mighty Car Mods, we sell these Mighty Car Mods cable ties on our online store.
This is what the carby looks like when it is fully broken down. You can see just how many parts there are and all of the adjustment possibilities, but that is something for another time. All right, people, so the fuel system is mostly done. We've got new fuel lines, new fuel pump. I've done the wiring on that. Fuel regulator is in. That obviously splits like a T-piece to send fuel to each of the carbies. Now, these have been completely cleaned and laid out by our, I was gonna call you a guitar expert, a Volkswagen expert. My friend Isaac, what a legend. He's the Yoda of the Volkswagen world, of the old badge, he loves it. Anyway, so this is gonna slow down a little bit now because we're gonna rebuild these and I actually wanna do one of them, you know, so I can learn how it's done. So we're gonna hang out and do that tonight. Then tomorrow, we do the battery, the ignition system, we do the oil system, make sure the brakes work, make sure the bearings and stuff are okay. And then we'll be ready to start it. Like it'll be skids tomorrow, yeah, right? Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, so absolutely. Thank you so much for your help today. I'm saying thank you now, even though we're still gonna be here for many more hours. No worries. Um, but thank you very much everybody for watching. That is the moon buggy, day one, heaps of progress, heaps of edumacation. And we'll see you back next time where we're gonna start it I was going to say, and skid it. I don't know if we'll skid it. We'll start it. We might skid it. Maybe. We might. We'll Maybe. see how we go. Anyway, we have carbies to build, so we'll see you next time on another episode of Mighty Moon. I'll stop. I'll stop. <laughs>